بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Does black magic exist? That's a question. Does it really exist? Subhanallah, I hear some females say yes. Did you hear them? Do the jinn really exist? That's a question. Oh, I hear everyone say yes. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. So people say, I don't believe in that. You know, there's magic going. I don't believe that. I don't believe in magic. It's not like we believe in magic, like to do the magic, but we have to believe that it exists. This is something we need to clarify right at the beginning. Witchcraft. We don't believe in doing it, but we believe it can be done and we believe it does exist because Allah speaks about it in the Quran. It's known as Sih in the Arabic language. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the evil people are the ones who engage in this type of magic, black magic and different types of magic. And it does have an effect on people. Yes, it does. And we have spoken about it or it is spoken about in the Sharia from two different angles. The one who does it and the one whom it is done upon. As for the one who does it, he takes himself or she takes herself out of the fold of Islam straight. There is no doubt. We will get to that in a moment. And as for the one whom it is done upon, it is indeed an infliction. It is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And at the same time, it is a test to see what you do about it now that you've been affected by it. It's a test to see what you are going to do about it now that you are affected by it. Quite simple. So sometimes innocent people who are affected by this type of black magic, for example, they resort to that which is worse in the quest of being cured. They want to be cured. They're running after the cure. And in the process, they fall into a trap. What is that trap? We want to speak about it today. But to begin with, we definitely believe that the jinn exists. There is a whole world of the unseen that we cannot deny. Nobody can deny the world of the unseen. The angels, do you see them? The answer is no. The jinn, do you see them? The answer is no. There are so many things around us, perhaps in this atmosphere that we have right now that we don't see. That's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't think for a moment that we are the only creatures in existence or that which we see with our eyes is the only are the only things in existence. In fact, Allah has created creation after creation. Some we may never know about. You take a look at the marine life, that which is in the oceans and in the water. How many different kinds of fish are they? There are people discovering different species as we speak and they will continue discovering up to the end of time that's allah's plan sometimes and when i've seen some of the national geographic programs regarding the nature and regarding the creation of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i am baffled allah created this type of a creature there is a fish that looks just like a stone exactly the same and suddenly it moves and they are so many different types of creatures in the water alone. It's so amazing. And then you take a look at the universe around us and the planets and the stars and how far they are. The closest star four and a half light years away. Subhanallah. The first time I was educated about this, I was actually told something mind boggling that at night when you see a star outside and you look at it, it was there four and a half years ago. It's not necessary that it's there right now while you're looking at it because for the light to have traveled to you where you are right now on earth, the minimum time is four and a half years. Some of them are thousands, some of them are millions, some of them are billions of light years away. Allahu Akbar. Look how slow man is. So there is definitely a life of the unseen. 
when there is anything to do with the unseen where do we take cue from that's a question where do i learn from can i just believe anyone and everyone on the street when they tell me there's a jinn just move aside <laughs> allahu akbar you know can i believe anyone and everyone who makes a sound you know yesterday one of the colleagues of mine was complaining about one of the people at the hotel the neighbors making a noise and they said we can do nothing about it i don't know one of the brothers said i complained to reception <laughs> i said there's a way now why did i say there's a way because i was reading about you know all these life of the unseen i said just go to the door and start making a noise <laughs> they will be quiet silent <laughs> jin, jin. <laughs> you know they will want to change their room why because obviously you just con them <laughs> may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding yes it's a solution people make you scared when we were kids they say be careful a jinn will come in from here you know aladdin's lamp have you ever heard of that story so he rubs the lamp and a genie appears that can happen in real life did you ever know that but it's not a joke and it's not a fairy tale it's not something to just laugh about it is something serious in order to get to the jinn there are certain deeds that are spoken about that are so dirty that when you engage in them a jinn will appear and the jinn will want to serve you one might ask why would the jinn want to serve me the reason is allah makes mention of iblis he is a jinn and he's one of the chiefs of the jinn and at the beginning he refused to prostrate to adam when we told the angels to prostrate to Adam, may peace be upon him, being the first of the species of mankind, all of them prostrated, but one did not prostrate. He was not from among the angels, but he was good enough to be mentioned amongst them. Why didn't he prostrate? He was Iblis. He refused. Do you know what he said? In another verse, Allah says, Qala ana minhu. He said, Oh, why should I prostrate to him? I am better than him. So what was it? It was a jealousy. That's what it is. Today, when people engage in magic, when people engage in witchcraft, when people want to go to fortune tellers and so on, there are reasons why they do this. One of the reasons, one of the reasons is they are jealous. They become jealous of you. This is why we say, my brothers and sisters, it's important for you not to display everything that you've been blessed with. You know, today we are living in an age of social media whereby people who don't have things go to stores that have those things. They test out the clothing and the shoes and they take pictures while trying it out and they haven't bought it, but they put it back from the change room onto the shelves and they show those pictures on Instagram to say, I have the latest shoe and I have have the latest dress and I have the latest this and I have the latest chains no one knows that you are only testing it at a store irritating those who work at the store <laughs> that's life it's become so cosmetic that it's a fake fake completely fake so Iblis became jealous of Adam alayhi salam. Allah mentioned the goodness of Adam. Allah spoke about how he's going to worship Allah. He will worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Iblis says, no ways. He will not worship you. He will worship me. I will show you and I will prove to you, O oh Allah, if you give me respite up to the end, if you give me a little bit of time, I will prove to you that any small thing, he will run to me, not to you. So we are mu'mineen. We believe and therefore when we have problems and issues we run to Allah not to Iblis you hear the point when you have a problem what do you do the problem will come it's a test from Allah to see if you deserve Jannah or not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and 
At the beginning of Surah Al-Ankabut, Allah says, Do, does man think that it's enough for him to say I'm a believer and then he will not be tested regarding that belief. Is he truthful or is he not? It's Allah who has tested those even before you in order to confirm who is truthful in their claim of faith and who is not. When I say Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa Ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu, it actually means I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship but Allah. So Allah says, I'm going to test you about that. It can't just be a statement by your mouth. It has to be work by your organs and belief in your heart in the same direction. Confirm what you've uttered by tongue with your heart and with your deeds. Let's see. So we are going to test you with one and a half thousand tests in 70 years. Allahu Akbar. If you pass them, you go to Jannah. If you pass the majority of them, you go to Jannah. If you pass the big ones from among them, you go to Jannah. If you pass sometimes one massive one, we will still give you Jannah through our mercy. We might disregard the fact that you failed in other tests. That's Allah's mercy. This is why when you say I bear witness that Muhammad peace be upon him is the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala You should know that Allah is going to test you regarding what you've claimed You said you bear witness wait we want to see are you just lying you know a person says that oh I am loyal to so and so or I belong to this or I am such a good person well we want to now have you proved that you are really a good person? You cannot just say I'm a good person and then you go to steal and you go to harm people and you go to commit sin and so on and you're claiming you're a good person. We want to substantiate that claim with action. The same applies as a mu'min. Allah will test you. So Allah allowed Iblis to come to us. If Allah wanted, he wouldn't have had that. But in order for the test to be completed, he had someone coming to give it to you. You know, imagine when you are asked in an examination, what is one plus one? You know, it's two. And if there was someone who came to you and told you, hey, think carefully, you are writing an A level examination, very high. It's the final qualifying exam for secondary school. This question one plus one is too simple for it to be on this particular paper. That is not the answer. It cannot be so easy. So doubt starts being created in your mind and you start thinking, ah, it can't just be two. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm writing, you know, the final exams of secondary school one plus one i learned it in grade one in kindergarten even before i went to school my mother taught me one two so i know one and one is two but this is now a level look at the doubt you know it so well that now you're doubting why is this question coming the same applies you and i know that allah is the owner of cure allah is the one in charge it is allah whom we call out to it is allah whom we worship so many times a day we say you alone we worship and you alone we seek help from we say that so many times we know it off the cuff we know it at the back of our heads we know it in our hearts but when it comes to the action it becomes too simple for us to actually follow allah says you've been saying it all day every day now when we are testing you in this regard why are you faltering why are you allowing iblis to come and say hang on you're only supposed to be worshiping allah but guess what if you want to get to allah you need to now do something else because you're too dirty i'm a human i was created by allah just like you were subhanallah if I follow the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I will definitely get to where I want to get to. So this is why be careful. Iblis comes and Iblis promised from the beginning, I'm going to test, I'm going to show you, O oh Allah, that I will divert them. So now when we see something good in someone else, human nature sometimes, if we do not control our heart and if we are weak in Iman, we become jealous. That jealousy, if not checked, can lead you to want to do something damaging to the person who is blessed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us. Always remember, when you see something good in someone else, MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. Tabarakallah is more important in that case than the MashaAllah. Why? You are making dua for Barakah for this person. May Allah bless them with Barakah. You can say Allahumma barik or you can say Tabarakallah or you can say MashaAllah Tabarakallah. You can add the two where you are asking for Barakah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For who? For this person, they've got something so nice. Subhanallah. 
The moment we become envious, the moment we want what someone else has that Allah did not bestow upon us. Yes, and we may want to work towards it. You see someone reciting Quran so beautifully. You see someone blessed with wealth. You see someone doing a lot of good work. You see someone, for example, doing so much and someone has been blessed in so many different ways. Allah's given them so much and you want to work towards that. There is no harm. Work towards it within halal means. Work towards it, make an effort and try and ask Allah. Allah will give you what is good for you just like he gave them what is best for them but don't let that get to another stage of i want it by hook or crook so i give you one example someone wants to marry someone and they can't why that person is married <laughs> allahu akbar did you hear that a man wants to marry a woman who is already married can that ever happen some people said yes some said no did you hear that <laughs> allahu akbar that's what i'm talking about exactly how yes you go to the bomos what are they called and they'll start taking coconuts and moving them forward and backward and two years later you might have some disaster what's the disaster may allah forgive us really is that the way They'll tell you, I can create love between you and that person. So there are different types of magic. One is where a person creates a distance between people. Where a person is turned away from someone. Father turned away from child. Husband turned away from wife. Such a lovely person, you just don't want them. You just don't want to look at them. Why? There is something going on. Something happening. Allah speaks about it in the Quran. وَمَا كَفَرَ سُلَيْمَانُ وَلَكِنَّ الشَّيَاطِينَ كَفَرُوا يُعَلِّمُونَ النَّاسَ السِّحْرِ Sulaiman salam was accused of participating in black magic. Allah says that wasn't black magic. That was the power we gave him. When he did things, it was us who gave him. He made a dua. رَبِّ هَبْ لِي مُلْكًا لَا يَنْبَغِي لِأَحَدٍ مِّنْ بَعْدِي إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْوَهَّابِ Allahu Akbar. He says, O oh Allah, bless me, give me, grant me kingdom, authority, that you will not grant anyone else after me. You are indeed the giver. That's the meaning of the term Al-Wahhab. You are the giver. O oh Allah, one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Wahhab. So Allah is the giver. Sulaiman alayhi salam says, you are the owner of everything. Give me this. Give me something great. Allah says, فَسَخَّرْنَا لَهُ الرِّيحَ تَجْرِي بِأَمْرِهِ رُخَاءً حَيْثُ أَصَابَ Allahu Akbar. The verses continue. Allah says, we gave him authority over the wind. It moved as per his instruction. Allahu Akbar. So when he gave the wind instruction to blow in a certain direction, it blew, not magic. It was the power of Allah. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam knew a lot of the unseen that he was given information of by Jibreel alayhi salam from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he knew things of the unseen, not because he was a fortune teller, but because he was a prophet. It's called a prophecy. It's not called fortune telling. He was given revelation and we believe revelation stopped. When Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam left us. So we follow him. Aisha radiallahu anha was crying. She was crying at the fact that revelation has now stopped. A lot of the other companions were crying at the fact that revelation has now stopped. When we had a problem, they said Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was given instruction by Allah as to how to resolve the matter. Revelation came from the heavens and the solutions were found immediately. Why? Because the messenger was in our midst. He had revelation. Now that he's not there, revelation has stopped, but we have a complete deen. That's the blessing of Allah. So the first type of magic is when someone is turned away from another, they begin to hate them. It's called Sihru Sarf. They turn away from your father, from someone else. They, and how does this happen? Like the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ says, Man sahara faqad ashrak. Did you hear that? Clear words. Clear words. 
Whoever has done magic has engaged in shirk. They have associated partners with Allah. What does that mean? You just removed yourself out of the fold of Islam. That's what it means. Whoever participates in magic, black magic, magic, any types of magic. You know, one is uh, a trickster, conjurer who's a trickster. He's quick, quicker than your eye. So he shows you, he pulled something out of his sleeve. What was it? A rabbit. <laughs> He's just faster than your eye. You know, he put his hand here and suddenly took it out and there's a flame. <laughs> Have you seen that? Sometimes it's just a trickster, a person who knows he's very quick, he's faster than your eye. That's all it is. You can actually train to become one. I don't know why you would, but anyway, you know, <laughs> people are entertained. They'll pay 200 ringgits to see a trickster, but they won't pay 100 ringgits to listen to how to get to Jannah. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. So, one is a person who's a trickster. The other is a magician, a person who uses the jinn in order to do things. You know, he'll slice your body into two, take one to that side of Kuala Lumpur and the other to the other side. The problem is when they can't fix it back. <laughs> and you got an issue, major issue. What's it? Ah, I thought it was going to work. No. I remember someone tell me that no, they connected one person's body, top body to another person's bottom body. And I was thinking to myself, it's all sihr. You know? If it depends how they've done it. So it happens sometimes with the assistance of jinn. I had a young brother who was going into, he was a trickster initially, and they tried to lure him into becoming a full fledged magician with the assistance of jinn. And he said, Wallahi, there are rituals we have to start performing. Why? Because Allah says, Hal ala man Surah Al -Shu Should we tell you whom these jinn, shayateen, descend to? You know, we ask ourselves, okay, well, the jinn goes to those people. Why doesn't the jinn come to me and say, hi, what can I do for you? You know, what can I do for you? And you say, oh, I need a million ringgits, please. And then he says, look at the ceiling. And suddenly a hundred starts floating, coming down. He says, you see, another hundred starts coming down. See, it doesn't happen to us. Why not? It would solve all our problems, wouldn't it? No, it wouldn't. It would create bigger problems for us. I wonder what the tax man would tell you. May Allah forgive us. So, when a person starts involving with shayateen and the jinn, Allah says, should we tell you whom the jinn descends to? Who does the jinn go to? What a powerful verse. Surah to shuara Allah says, the jinn comes down to those who are liars. Affakin. They create slander and tales. They are sinful people. Athim. People who constantly engage in sin. They have to have done something. Sometimes people flush the Quran down the loo. Do you know that? In order to get control of a jinn. Sometimes the people write the Quran with defecation. Na'udhu billah. Astaghfirullah. I'm just letting you in on what really happens. And then they get control of a jinn. The jinn comes. Why? Shaitan is so happy you become a ringleader as well. You have crossed a certain threshold after which you will get control of some jinn. And what do they do with these jinn? They use them. And why, do, why is the jinn ready to be used? Because the jinn is so happy that you have now turned away from Allah. You are out of the fold of Islam. You can be reading your salah. You can be giving your zakah. You can be doing everything. The fact is you are engaging in major shirk. That's what it is. You are engaging in a major type of seeking assistance from that which is besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially in the form of the unseen, the jinn kind. And what will happen? They will lead you from one to another. Once you enter that territory to come out is very very difficult remember that once you enter that territory to come out is so difficult this is why when people go to the fortune teller once they will end up going there for another 10 years every little while and the irony is the fortune teller keeps changing what he's told you or she's told you you know i know of a young man who went to four different fortune tellers the four of them told him so many different things and when he told him but someone else told me a different thing you know what they said they said, well, somehow through your prayers, the things have just changed. 
Now you want to say through your prayers, it's changed. It's just that you are swiping. You're just taking a chance. You know, they said there was a king who was very, very fat. Now for your information, don't be too upset with your weight. Come on, if it's 60 kilos or 100 kilos, what's the big? 40 kilos is minor. They'll allow it on Emirates, inshallah. But at the end of the day, let me tell you, when we become too depressed with our weight, what happens? We want to become people who really want to be thin and slim, size zero. They have the A4 challenge. I don't know if the sisters know about that. Look, they're laughing. They know. Brothers, do you know about the A4 challenge? Most of them are saying no. You know what they do? They take a paper, A4 size, like this, right? They say the waist must be A4, you know? A4, like this. So they actually show it, they measure it from here. Wallahi, it's a challenge. They are participating in it. So they don't eat, they don't drink. They begin to see stars. They begin to hear voices. Why? There's no food, no drink. Your system is finished. In our language, they say, kaput, it's gone. Allahu Akbar, it's over. Allahu Akbar. And now, A4, you have a figure like a trigger, as they say. But guess what happened? You are seeing things, you are hearing things, your eyes are gone in, you look like you are totally possessed, and you start hearing voices, and you can't sleep at night, and everything's gone wrong. Do you know why? Just eat. Come to Malaysia, makan, makan, makan everywhere, mashallah. You'll enjoy yourself, alhamdulillah. Eating everywhere you go. And they tell you it's quite cheap still, even though the ringgit, mashallah, I think it's becoming a little bit stronger again. Alhamdulillah. But at the same time, it's not a joke. It is serious. In our quest to become so slim, we stop eating. When we stop eating, what happens? We get sick. When we get sick, we think that the jinn is affecting us. There's no jinn. It's just the food. That's what it is. I remember telling someone who was in one of these conditions to say, jinn don't like dairy products. So you have to have a chocolate a day. Uh -huh. You have to have so many grams of red meat every week you have to have so much of you know this and that and protein and carbs and whatnot and make sure that you eat something healthy and they're like, huh? and wallahi i tell you there was a case where the sister started having yogurt and and you know cake and 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 uh, chocolate and so on and the very next morning the mother phones me to say mashallah she had a sound sleep shukran for removing the jinn and i'm like hang on there was no jinn <laughs> there was no jinn it was just because you know this challenge that you have and you started wanting to lose just weigh a little bit more so what you know true love goes beyond your looks i'm not saying waste yourself no I'm not saying waste yourself. You, you must try to look as best as you can for your spouse. But an inch here or there shouldn't really make a difference in how much he loves you or she loves you. Imagine, subhanallah. You know, one day there was a guy who, has, who had a wife who suddenly started gaining weight. So she was very conscious, but he tells me, Wallahi, she's such a lovely woman. She's given birth to eight of my children. Imagine eight. By the way, eight is also the past tense of eat, huh? So at the same time, <laughs> subhanallah. So what happened is, he says, please, I need, you know, I need to help her because she's getting depressed and so on. And I know that this is the best she can do and so on. So I told him something. I said, tell her, I love it when you are weighing a little bit more, look a little bit slightly more, you know, bigger, more to love, mashallah, you know. More to hold, alhamdulillah. When you're so thin, I, I, I've got such a, so little to love actually, you know, subhanallah. Anyway, that's just a way of getting across. But there was this king, he was quite big, fat. And what happened is, he couldn't lose weight. So he gathered the doctors and the people and everyone, look, whoever, whoever helps me to lose my weight, I will make him my deputy. So the people tried, this one tried, that, that doctor came, the specialist came, everyone tried their tricks, nothing happened. An old man came and he pretended to be a fortune teller. Here comes the issue of fortune telling. And he says, what's the point of you wanting to lose weight when exactly in six months time you're going to die? What? How sure are you that I'm going to die? You know, that's what happens. The fortune teller tells you you're going to die at 72. So by the time 72 comes, you've been counting for the last 10 years. You already feel sick and you already want to die. 
Why? Because you're waiting for 72 to come. You're going to die at 72. So this king, as he's told that you're going to die in six months, he's counting the days. He's worried. He cannot eat. He cannot sleep. And he's gathering the people. He got this man to sign a document. If you do not lose weight, you can punish me. Guess what happened? It was supposed to be, if you do not die, you can punish me. It was a trick from this man. Six months passed, he didn't die. A day more, two days more, he's wondering, I haven't died. But everything sorted. And you know what? He was so worried for six months, he lost all his weight. So here comes the poor person when they called him and they told him, listen, you're about to be punished and jailed because you lied. He didn't die. He said, but he lost his weight. He lost his weight, didn't he? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. What a liar. So my brothers and sisters, people seek the help of jinn. Those who have control of the jinn or those who participate with the jinn or those who seek help from the jinn can never ever come up with something good. Remember this. Allah says in Surah Al-Jinn and I'd like you people to read Surah Al-Jinn. One young boy told me I can't read Surah Al-Jinn. I just get scared. I said for what? The Quran is a heavenly book. Allah is teaching you. Allah is teaching you. Read Surah Al-Jinn. Allah speaks about how there were people from mankind who were seeking the help of the jinn kind. So the jinn kind increased them in every form of destruction. The jinn, what do they do to you? If you have spoken to a jinn and if you have contact with a jinn and you ask the jinn a question, I give you an example. Some of these people who claim to cure you, you know, they start speaking to the jinn. And sometimes a person who's possessed will speak. You might even hear them. They will speak in a tongue or in a voice. And that voice is sounds like a female, yet it's a male speaking. Have you heard that? And then the person who happens to be the so-called trying to cure. Sometimes they are innocent people. Sometimes they are reading Quran and this thing happens and they start speaking and they go into a bit of a trance and they start talking. And you know what? This is the exorcism. Exorcism is of two types. That which is prohibited, which is not from the Quran and the Sunnah. And that which is permissible, which is from the Quran and the Sunnah. It's a test from Allah. Which way do you want? Some people are sick for a long, long time. They say, no, I had no option. You are not allowed to deal with magic with other magic. You can't. You cannot employ a thug in order to catch another thug. Although the English saying states, it takes a thief to catch one. You know that? It takes a thief to catch a thief. But that's not an Islamic saying. Because you cannot employ a thief knowing he's a thief. You know what he will do? He will rob the original jewels and give you the fake ones and still pretend like he caught the thief. That's what they will do. So what, what happens here? The jinn speaks. When the jinn speaks, the question that everyone is itching to find out is who did the magic, right? Why do you want to know that? You will never ever know. In order to know the unseen, you need Jibreel alayhi salam. You need revelation. Revelation has stopped. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam was told after 30 days that there is a man known as Labid ibn al-A'asam al-Yahudi who participated or engaged in this black magic and witchcraft. If it was not for revelation, what would have happened? So this is why with us, does Jibreel come to you? Does Jibreel come to the other man who happens to be a sheikh? No, they ask the jinn a simple question. Who sent you? My mother-in-law. <laughs> Blame her, her sister-in-law. You heard that? Astaghfirullah. A'udhu billah. They lied. And in the past, when I have been participating in some of this, where you find a person starting to speak and you're, part, you're engaging in exorcism by the recitation of the Quran and so on, I usually would say, you are lying. So you hear this jinn speak again with a different name. And then I say, you're still lying. And they give you a third name. And all I tell the people is, look, I'm only trying to prove to you that there is no specific answer. They will continue lying because the primary aim of the devil is to break your family to start with. Allahu Akbar.
The primary aim of the devil is to break your family to start with. Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah says the jinn teaches you or taught them that which would separate the husband from wife separates the husband from wife. You know what happens when you are trying to cure the person who is sick, the person who might be inflicted by witchcraft or black magic, the person who might be slapped by the devil, the person who might have a possession of the jinn. When you're trying to cure them in the process, as the jinn is running away, it will leave behind a bigger problem. What's the problem? Husband and wife are no longer talking. Parents are no longer talking. Brothers are no longer talking. Family no longer talking. Your aunt is guilty. Your in-laws are guilty. Such such a granny is guilty people who are absolutely innocent who've never participated in anything of this nature are guilty in your eyes because you've become entrapped by the devil he left you in a trap as he left watch out it's a major sin that's why we're speaking about it today it's a major sin it will entrap you from all angles you are trapped while you are alive you think you're cured but shaitan having run away or having been exorcised out of you do you know what would happen he would leave you with a bigger problem but if you continue to make dua to allah you continue to participate in that which was ordained by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yes the cure might come a little bit slower sometimes why let me explain why if you are struggling on earth and you don't have money, there are two main ways of getting money. You either become a thief and steal from people who have the money, but you live in fear throughout the rest of your life. Agreed? I pinched the people's money. Now I'm worried. Or there is another way. And that is work hard and earn a salary. How much will they pay you a month? 5,000 ringgit maximum for a, for a job where you don't have so many qualifications. Do you agree? 5,000 ringgit, not a bad salary. Actually, it's a brilliant salary if you were to ask me. Am I right? See how many people are looking for jobs. Did you hear the yes? MashaAllah. May Allah grant us good jobs. Baraka in our wealth. Say Amin. So you have this 5,000 ringgit a month, but it will take you 10 months to get 50,000. If you were a thief, it would take you one second to get 50,000. One, you get it immediately, but you live with fear for the rest of your life. The other, you get it slowly, but you did it properly. There is baraka in it. The same applies to cure from your sickness. You are sick and ill. There is a quick way of doing it by going to Bomos or whatever they are called. I don't know. Back in our part of the world, they are either called Sangomas or Ngangas. Different words. And they will tell you things. They throw bones at you. They poke you with a rod and they start participating in various rituals that you don't understand. Ma anzalallahu biha min sultan. Allah did not reveal authority to anyone to engage in that type of activity. So what happens? Your problem is solved. I'm cured. I know of a person who was walking hunchback and they went to someone and they came back walking straight. Hey, I'm cured. Mash, I'm cured. But guess what? You got cured the wrong way. I'd rather have gone to all the doctors and done this and done that. And yes, to get a dua from a pious person, no harm, not at all. It's good to go and get some permissible means of curing you is really good. But to use the haram method, it will entrap you forever. My brothers and sisters, be careful when you are affected by something. Number one. It may not be jinn. It may not be black magic. Remember that a lot of the times we are so weak. Anything happens. Oh, someone did something, you know, why my eye is twitching. Have you heard that one? My eye is twitching. You know, my, my leg is moving. It must be a lack of vitamin B. My brother, <laughs> Allahu Akbar. It must be a lack of vitamin D the way you have. I'm so tired every day. I'm this, there might be extra candida in your body. You know, they call it the fungal infection of the belly. A little bit too much. So now you have too much sugar, too much of what? Notice I said sugar in a Malay accent. Have you noticed that? <laughs> but you have too much of all of these things. Subhanallah, you've got, for example, a lot of yeast in your body. Too much yeast and sugar. Oh, you've got a problem. Too much Coke, too much of whatever else. You know, you feel lazy. Cut out your sugars. Have something. When I say cut out, I mean minimize. Have something healthy. Eat a little bit less. Don't eat so much. When you fill your belly with so much of, you know, what do they call it? The, the food that they have, you know, roti chennai and whatever else. A lot of it, subhanallah. 
You have so much of it. What happens? MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. And then you want to blame the jinn. Why? I'm so lazy. Your jinn is, you just need to control it, man. You know, some people eat too little, they have a jinn. Some people eat too much, they have a jinn. That is why be balanced. Be in the center. My brothers and sisters, the moral of what I'm saying, don't blame everything on the jinn. Sometimes it's just a health matter. Sometimes you have a psychological problem, to be honest with you. Because why? You're thinking too much. Your Iman is weak. That's why you are suffering. You're, when your Iman is weak, you know what happens? You start thinking, what's going to happen to me, my future? You know, I'm 23, I'm not yet married. What's going to happen? And you're sitting at night and worrying. If worrying got you married, we'd all have four wives. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Yes. You stop worrying in that way. Worrying never solves a problem. Trust me, lay your trust in Allah. Do what you can in your capacity. Go out and try as hard as you can. Never ever leave any stone unturned when it comes to your effort and leave the rest in the hands of Allah. Don't worry, sleep like a log, mashallah, for as long as you get up for Salatul Fajr. <laughs> but that's the way forward. The problem with us, you can't have a job. Someone's done magic on me. Let's go away. Let's go to these fortune tellers, magicians. You can call them what you want. People who engage in superstitious activity. Islam is the fastest growing religion on earth because the, the Quran and the Sunnah in reality are logical. They make sense. The minute you see superstition, the people won't want to accept Islam. Imagine someone wants to accept Islam and you tell them when you have a problem, you must just go to these people. They will dangle an elastic band by your nose and make you sneeze three times. And you'll be okay. <laughs> it happened to me and I was okay. How were you okay? You felt okay when you sneezed perhaps, but that was the devil making you feel okay because he wanted to insult Allah. And he tells Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, look, he laughs at us. Look at this guy. I made a fool of him. Do you know? I made a fool of him. I made him do something, pretending or thinking that he's going to be cured through that. And when you told him, I am a Shafi, he just turned away from that. What does Ibrahim alayhi salam say? When I become sick, it is he, Allah alone, who is the owner of cure, he will cure me. I don't turn to anything else. So keep on making dua. One might ask, okay, if I want to protect myself from these things, what do I do? Number one, every morning and evening, put a metal armor around you. How do you put that around you? You don't want to be affected by jinn. You don't want to be affected by black magic. I told you one is the person who participates in it. He has disbelieved in Allah. If a person goes to a fortune teller to ask him a question out of curiosity, that means I don't want to believe them, but I say I'm just going for the fun of it. The hadith in Sahih Muslim says, Allah will not accept his salah for 40 days. You go to a fortune teller, okay, right, tell me my fortune. I'm just joking. I just want to see what he says. No, 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 I didn't believe in it. I just want to see. Allah says, even if you just wanted to see what he said, your salah is not accepted for 40 days. It's a hadith in Sahih Muslim by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Subhanallah, how come? Now here comes a young man not reading Salah. Why are you not reading Salah? Oh, I'm off. What do you mean you're off? Are you a woman? <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I, I went to a magician. Now 40 days, I'm just off, you know. I, I... Astaghfirullah. That is not the meaning of the Hadith. The meaning of the Hadith is that for 40 days, the reward of your Salah is not achieved. You have to read it. You have to fulfill it. If you don't fulfill your Salah, you will be punished. And when you fulfill it, because you did something evil, the reward of it is not there. Similar to a person who's drunk alcohol or something intoxicating. The hadith says 40 days, salah is not accepted, which means the reward of the salah will not get to you. It's like payment of a punishment. Your salary is being deducted. You still have to go to work. If you don't go, you're not going to get a salary. You have to go to work. You will get a salary, but it's deducted as a fine for something you did that was bad. So if you go for fun to a fortune teller, 40 days salah, you've messed up and you need to still engage in Tawbah. Why? I was just engaging in fun. Well, I tell you when people see you there, they will go there seriously. No one knew that you were there for fun. 
So you're not allowed to go there even for fun. It's like a guy going to the nightclub, subhanallah. And he's there every night and he tells me, I'm just going there for fun to check what's happening. Check what's happening. Who are you trying to fool? Who are you trying to fool? And the problem with the nightclub, you go twice, thrice to check what's happening. The fourth time they will be seeing what's happening with you. And if you go to a fortune teller and you believe what he told you, anyone who claims to know the unseen, when you believe what they tell you, you know what Muhammad says? Firstly, we need to know that Allah is the owner of the unseen. He has given information of the unseen to Muhammad as per his discretion, but through revelation, subhanallah. And at the same time, anyone else who claims to know the unseen, throw it out throw it out man ata arrafan aw kahinan fasaddaqahu bima akhbar whoever goes to a fortune teller one who claims to know things of the unseen and believes what he or she was told faqad kafara bima unzila ala muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says he has disbelieved in what Muhammad sallallahu brought, that means the Quran and the Sunnah, he has disbelieved. So how can you believe a fortune teller? How can you go to the fortune tellers? They want to tell you what's lying in the future. They are lying themselves about the future. So how should I protect myself from those who intend to harm me? Sometimes I can be affected by a jinn because I'm unclean myself. I'm not interested in prayer. I'm not interested in the proper dress code. I'm not interested in, you know, things that I'm supposed to be doing. I have no link with the Quran, no link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then I get affected by the jinn because my life is dark anyway. I lead such a dark life, subhanallah. And now the darkness, I'm affected. Not necessarily someone did something, but it's my lifestyle. Every day I'm in the club, I become sick. Person on drugs, they get affected by the jinn also at a certain time. Why? Because their life is full of disobedience of Allah every day, day in, day out. So, and what do they become? They become the comrades of the devil. Whoever turns away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the remembrance of the most merciful, we appoint for them a devil to be their companion. The devil becomes a companion of such a person. Why? They don't have good companions. But when people inflict you with harm and you have, for example, been affected by black magic and so on, there is a cure. In fact, we should be protecting ourselves before we are affected. If you are affected, you are to blame. Why didn't you protect yourself by the protection taught by Muhammad He taught you how to protect yourself. Why did you not protect yourself? Simple. What did he say? Ayatul Kursi, morning and evening, if possible, after every prayer. Morning thrice, in the evening thrice. After Fajr, after Salatul Maghrib. The problem is we didn't get up for Fajr and we couldn't, bother to be, we couldn't be bothered to read our Maghrib. That's the problem. Ayatul Kursi is a verse in the Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah. We read it thrice. Take your time. It will take you five minutes to do what I'm telling you. Five minutes in the morning or ten and five minutes or 10 in the evening a total of not more than 20 to 24 minutes in 24 hours to do what to protect yourself from who from the devil from everything evil so then you read the mu'awwidat the last verses of the quran the last two surahs of the quran minimum two you could read three we read them thrice each Morning and evening. Similarly, you ask Allah's protection using the words that were used by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A'udhu bi kalimati Allahi tamati min sharri ma khalaq. I seek the protection of Allah. I seek refuge in all the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evil that he has created. Oh Allah, can you protect me from all the evil that you've created? We repeat that dua thrice. Bismillah in the name of Allah. Alladhi la yadurru ma asmihi shay'un fil ardi wa la fis samai wa huwa as-sami'ul alim. In the name of Allah. 
by whose name nothing can harm me in the skies or the earth. He is all hearing, all knowing. That dua repeated thrice, morning and evening. And then see what happens. Nothing will come close to you. Then if something happens to you, it's definitely not connected to the jinn and it's not connected to any of these superstitious things. It's perhaps just a medical problem. The problem with us, we don't read this. Morning comes, we just get up and rush to work. There was no salah and nothing happened. Evening comes, we couldn't be bothered about anything. Even if you have been affected, continue to read these duas. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was affected at one stage according to many ahadith that make mention of it. Why? Not because he deserved it, astaghfirullah, but because Allah wanted to teach us a lesson to say when something like this happens to you, if it happened to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, look at how he dealt with it. Did he go to people to say this and to say that? No. He struggled for 30 days. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the last two surahs of the Quran, Falak and Nas, as a result of what happened. There was a man known as Labid ibn al-Asam al-Yahudi, who took the hair of the Prophet sallallahu and tied it into knots and put it on a comb and tied it in knots and blew into it. This is why anyone who ties the knots and blows into the knots has engaged in black magic. Be careful. It removes you from the fold of Islam. But don't do something un-Islamic to save yourself. What else is beneficial? We have the leaf of the cedar tree. The leaf of the cedar tree. You can crush it. You can bathe with that water. You can even drink that water. It is said to be healthy, beneficial. You know, today a lot of the people have green tea. They take the leaves of a tree, they take green tea, not green tree. And so, so many different types of drinks. But at the same time, some of these are really beneficial, not only for your health, even for your spiritual self. You know, when you have a strong body, when you are healthy, you are a stronger believer at the same time. Then we have the date. Dates are very healthy, rich in iron. There is a specific date known as Ajwa. The hadith makes mention of it. It's a small round black date. It's not so sweet. If you have seven of those every morning, the hadith says you'll be cured from all disease and sickness and protected from magic and so on. Similarly, raw honey is absolutely beneficial. Did you know that? Similarly, Extra virgin olive oil, cold pressed, is very healthy for you. You can either rub it, you can have a little bit of it, you can exchange the cooking oil that you might be using for that. You can have it in your salad, you can have it in whatever way. It is beneficial from the hadith. Similarly, it, when you look at the water of Zamzam, if you have some of it, have a little bit of it. Now and again, it's powerful. It will, it will help you in every single way. There is something known as the black seed, Habbatus Sauda. Have it. There is a way of having it either in the oil form, very little of it, or in the little grains that you have, very few of them. You can rub it as well. Very slightly, not much of that. It's very strong. But that helps you. It's from the hadith. Habbatus Sauda has shifa and cure in it, this black seed. Another powerful way of curing yourself is cupping. You know what is cupping? Subhanallah, hijama. That's what it's known as. To remove the dirty blood from your body by creating small cuts in a professional way. Don't just do a back alley job. Get it done properly. Try and learn about the days it's supposed to be done. The odd nights to the second half of the, the Islamic month or the lunar calendar. It's better. So these are some of the ways of curing yourself. It's important for us to know this because you continue doing this and you will find the eradication of the effects of the magic on you. You will find slowly but surely you will be healed. With hijama, they say it is so helpful, it can actually chase away a jinn if you've been possessed by a jinn. It can actually do that for you. And then you need to engage in a lot of dua. Call out to Allah, cry to Allah, call out to Him a lot. Sometimes Allah allows you to be affected because He wants you to soften up to Him. You have people who are hard, nothing stops them. They are tyrant. They are, 
you know, people who are too, too bent in their dirty ways and habits and Allah wants to soften them. They are too proud and arrogant and, and then they are bashed with something of this nature. They have no option but to cry to Allah to cure them. No option. Who was that? That was Allah softening you. So become soft. You know, when Allah tests you and you become softened, it's a very good sign. It's a very good sign. But when Allah tests you and you become even harder, it's the worst thing that you could do. Then we have the recitation of the Quran at large. Surah Al-Baqarah in particular is powerful against the devil. Did you know that? The last few verses of Surah Al-Baqarah. لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. Going to the end, you will find they are powerful. They are made mention of in the hadith of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم. لا يطيقها البطلة. You know the shaitan do not enter a house where Surah Al-Baqarah is read. So learn to read it. People say, can I just put on a cassette or CD and so on the radio and whatever? That may help you, but the true help will come when you yourself take the time to sit down and read. Sit down and read. Similarly, your adhkar. How many times do you praise Allah in the day? How many of us? The day passes and we haven't said, Oh Allah, I love you. Oh Allah, I praise you. All praise is due to you, oh Allah. What, have, what haven't you blessed me with? Oh Allah, I love you. How many of us have said that? How many of us have actually said, Subhanallah, thinking about it? Just when you're walking, just when you're doing anything, Alhamdulillah. You sit and you look at the food and you start thinking of the poor people across the globe. You know, you turn the tap on the shower here at this hotel, for example, and you know, it is so, so beautiful that a person who's not conscious of Allah might just want to stay there for an hour. Because why? A oh, lovely shower, the pressure of the water, the temperature. When you start thinking about people who haven't even seen that type of water in the last 10 years, you quickly turn it off. You say, oh Allah, I thank you. You allowed me to bath. I didn't waste time. Five minutes, I was out. Allah, I thank you. There are people who haven't had that. Look at the clothing you have. There are people who can't afford the people who don't have. Have you ever said, Alhamdulillah, ya Allah, you gave me clothing, Alhamdulillah, and walk away. Or while you're walking. That will protect you from the devil because when the devil knows you are connected to Allah, the devil moves away. The closer you are to Allah, the further you will be from the devil. It's like a seesaw relationship. Do you know that? You cannot be close to the devil and to Allah at the same time. You cannot. You are either close to Allah, so you are away from the devil or vice versa. You've got to choose. There is another type of magic. What is it? The first type of magic is where you are separated from someone. Another type of magic is where you are brought close to someone, so close. You know, when people go, they cannot marry. Like I started off by saying, you cannot marry this person because they are married. So they go to some of these witch doctors. And they say, this is what I want. They say, okay, you do this, you do that. And some of them pretend to be so pious. I don't take money. I just don't take money. I don't take money. But they use the jinn to enter into your bloodstream. Some people don't have a problem when they visit a witch doctor. The witch doctor inflicts them with a problem. Be careful. Did you hear that? Some people don't have a problem when they visit these people. They are inflicted with a problem. They give you this to do and that to do. And like I've said in the past, they'll tell you to cut so many lemons and to, you, to take rose petals from the yellow rose and the red rose and to come. I know of a person who was told to go to the crossroads and start bathing naked with water at 12 o'clock at night. And they were considering doing that. Whew. Allahu Akbar. That's how desperate we become. So they will go to this witch doctor and say, I want to marry this woman. He says, so what's wrong? Well, she's married. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. So he says, no problem. I will separate them. And I will make sure that she loves you. And she gets to you and so on. They can't do anything. They create chaos. You know, the disasters that are caused from this type of activity. Number one is fear. Shaitan will instill in you fear of everything besides Allah. Number two, doubt. You start doubting your spouse. You doubt this person. Anything that happens, you are in doubt because your iman is weak. That's why. Your iman becomes so weak that you start doubting your family members, your cousins, your relatives, your uncles, your aunts, your in-laws, your greater family. People are jealous of me. Nobody's jealous of you. 
Nobody's jealous, to be honest with you. A lot of the times, people might, yes, look at you and say, Mashallah, you've got and so on. But they haven't gone as far as you think they have. And if they have, then it's so dirty. But there is a way of curing. And we spoke about that. So now there is a problem in that person's home. There is a problem with you as well. And that person ends up with a divorce. Husband and wife were getting along. Suddenly they don't. And suddenly this person starts inclining towards you. How did you achieve that? What did you try to do? Why did you want to do it? Why do you want to tamper with all this? Where do they get their information from? How do they do all this? It's from the jinn. It's from the devil. This is something dirty. It is something we are not supposed to be participating in. It is there. It exists. It is possible. But you lose your heaven. You lose your Jannah. You either have something you want for five minutes in this world or for five years, and you lose your entire hereafter, which is everlasting, or you bear sabr with what Allah has tested you with, and you achieve your entire hereafter, which is eternity. The choice is yours. My brothers and sisters, whatever we've said this today, this morning has been extremely important, very important. But this is only the tip of the iceberg. It is a major sin to participate in witchcraft. It is a major sin to go to those who tell fortune, even if it means by your hands or, you know, horoscope or anything else, it is a major sin. You are not allowed to participate and you're not allowed to believe. Don't even read it. It's not true. People say, no, I believe it is true. It's not true. Allah, make dua to him. It weakens your iman. It weakens it and makes it flat. And then you read salah, you achieve nothing by it. Why? Because your heart is not connected to Allah. It's connected to everything besides Allah. You're just paying lip service. Like I've said in the past, people come for Jum'ah Salah because they don't want to be seen not being there. Or they don't want to not be seen at the masjid. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us forgiveness. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and our offspring from all of these types of deeds that will earn the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah bless us all.